I'm Steve Henry with Wild West Aircraft from Idaho, Nampa, Idaho. Uh, we've been, we're dealers for these air, airplanes here, the Just Aircraft Highlanders and also the Super Stoles. This is a Highlander. I'm, I'm, I like the Highlander more than the Super Stoles, so that's what I fly. Um, I'm here in Jennings, Louisiana right now for the Swamp Stole competition. And we did the preliminary round today. And I haven't seen numbers, but I think it went pretty good. Uh, I know I was happy with with my with my takeoffs and landings, but yeah, th this is a Highlander. It's a really good backcountry airplane because it, it, it lands short, takes off short. It's got a really nice big baggage area. I don't know if you can see in there too good, but for a for a light plane like this, it's it's really a nice big baggage area. And the seats, you can see one seat here is removed right now. I, I did that just for to get rid of weight for the stole competition, but it only takes me seconds to put that seat in or out. And they, they'll slide forward and back, they'll lean forward. So it makes it so you can take advantage of that nice big baggage area. Some, some of these planes, it's pretty hard. They'll have a fixed fiberglass seat that you just, all you can do is over the top. So we can really get in there. I've had two full-size folding electric mountain bikes in here. So th that, that's one thing we really like about it. Um, I guess while we're here at the cockpit, I, I, I put my park and brake underneath the seat here. This is my fuel pumps, fuel filters, because it's a fuel injected engine, so you gotta have fuel pumps. It's not gravity fed. And this just makes a real good place to put them out of the way, easy to get to them. You ever need to you know, clean the filter or something like that. My flap lever. Um, normally, the flaps will have a clicker here. There are notches, one, two, three notches. I have mine hydraulic. I have a little cylinder in here, a little hydraulic cylinder, so I can lock them anywhere. It doesn't matter where, I can pull it and it's, it stays there until I flick the lever. So when you're, when you're doing these landings and you, you, you know, you're trying to be really accurate, where this plane has flaps versus flapperons, it's easier to be accurate on your landings. And, and this, what really helps me here too, is I'm on my throttle and when I want to dump my flaps, all I have to do is flick that with my little finger. And it, when the flaps are loaded with the air, it goes really fast. And so I'm, I just flick that and I'm right back on my throttle. So if I have, because you're, you're working the throttle when you're doing this, you know, high performance landings, you're on the, on the, on the edge, on the ragged edge and of performance of whether the plane is going to fly or not fly. So you're really working it. You might notice on my throttle, it's, it's filled in there, it's round. If I don't have a round throttle knob, I, I wear a big red circle in the palm of my hand because like when I go practice, I might do a hundred takeoffs and landings in a couple hours. I've done that many times. So well, it, you, my hand will just be raw if I, don't, if I don't have a smooth throttle knob. This kind of a crude looking thing here, I could make something a little nicer, but anyway, it holds my phone for my camera for my engine monitor, the small square one there is my engine monitor, and this is my EFIS with all my airspeed, ground speed, all that kind of stuff. Well, it'll record all that, so when I'm doing takeoffs and landings, I'm too busy flying the airplane to be doing a lot of looking at my panel, but I want to know what's going on with, with things, so I can come back and look at the video on my phone, just like real time right now, you know how easy it is to look at a phone video. And uh, it helps with my testing and stuff too, and I want to know just exactly what's happening. Um, just we, we were kind of camered up here for the stole competition today. We have a YouTube channel, just Steve Henry on YouTube, and uh, we're, we got quite a few videos on there. If you like watching short takeoff landing stuff, backcountry flying, you might check out our YouTube channel. Like I say just Steve Henry. The Highlander has an under camber on the wing, so it's a real high lift wing already. It's not a super fast wing. My cruise speed is 100 miles an hour. But I'm really happy, most, people, most of us that fly them are happy with a 100 mile an hour cruise when we have such good short field capability. It can land and take off in such small places. I'm content with a 100 mile an hour cruise. Um, but this high lift wing, this under camera wing helps with that. I have a cuff, it's a fiberglass cuff on the leading edge of the wing that changes the profile and that helps even more. And then quite often I run these slats and uh, they, they kind of like scoop up the air here and accelerate it over the top of the wing, which makes the wing stay attached, the air stay attached. What happens when an airplane wing stalls 
is that wing, that air flowing over the top of the wing detaches. It doesn't flow, it, it detaches from the wing and that's called a stalled wing and it's no longer flying at that point. You're, you know, you're gonna come down. So well, this keeps the air attached longer because it goes faster. And there's also vortex generators up there that kind of swirl it and that also keeps the air attached longer and better. So that's, um, I, I reshape the front of my ailerons. This is another thing that I do on my airplane. The normal leading edge shape is more rounded, like up on the flap here. But this is called a freezy aileron, and it makes the airplane have less adverse yaw, and it makes the ailerons quicker and the roll rate quicker. Because this gets right in the airstream, and that helps. You're trying to push this up, well, that's helping you because it's in front of the pivot pushing down. So that, that makes the, the roll rate faster and the ailerons feel a lot nicer. Um, these, these little guys just kind of help keep the air under the wing rather than rolling out from under because I'm, I'm really into the stole, you know, the short takeoff stuff. I love doing these competitions and things. So I, I think I hadn't, didn't really test this with the other type of wing tip but I think it's better for Stoll, and that's based on a really good friend of mine that has done a lot of testing on a Cub, and he says this is definitely the best Stoll wing tip for a Cub. And they do have a different wing than we do, but still a wing is a wing too. Um, right now, I do have a little bit of extra wing on here for competition. Normally this last 18 inches, I don't have it on here but I have it set up real easy, where it's just a couple screws, pop it off, pop the regular wing tip on. And uh, for normal flying, I don't, I don't use that. There's a few things on here for normal flying I don't use. This is another one. This is, I, I just call it a deflector. It's just here close to the fuselage in the prop wash where the air is really coming off that prop. Well, I'm taking, I'm taking that air blasting back here and kind of turning it down. And it does create a little more lift. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's not a huge thing, but it's a little thing that, you know, those little things can add up, you know, and uh, I, I go to these things to try to win them. And uh, so I pay attention to the little things. And that's, that's, that's one of them. Again, I, I don't like flying with it, just normal flying. It's very draggy. You, you don't even, you don't like flying with it at all. But for a competition, all you do is fly around the patch, maybe 60, 70 miles an hour, you're not going fast anyway. They work for me. Whether they'd work on other airplanes, other airfoils, I don't know. Uh, this, this particular one has the, what Just Aircraft calls the flying tail with the airfoil built into it. Um, I'm about to build myself another new Highlander, and I'm going back with just the flat airfoil. Um, it, it's it's good either way, it really is. It, I didn't pick up any speed whatsoever with going to an airfoil versus flat. It's the exact same speed. I do get a little bit better, you know, flare, a little more flare authority with the airfoil. It's kind of an upside down airfoil. It's like a wing turned over, so it creates downforce a little more. Um, I do have some the, the, okay, here's kind of an interesting thing, or I thought it was. This tail was eight and a half feet wide. Well, I've decided to, there's so many competitions now that I need to fold these wings and put in a trailer to make sure I get here because there's so much weather we're so far away. So I had to cut three inches off of my tail on each side to get it in the trailer. So I built these fiberglass pieces to put on so I have more more elevator again and they I just they're real easy to take off to put it back in the trailer just another little thing it's not like I could really feel that you know when I'm landing but those little things add up um, this is something I didn't do for a long time is seal the gap on my rudder I thought well, why do I need to do that I have lots of rudder authority and I do it's a real big rudder I land in huge crosswinds but what I notice is when I'm flying it on that edge coming in real slow and I'm trying to leave those ailerons alone because so I, I don't want to mess up my airfoil, 
I switch over to flying it with the rudder instead of ailerons when I'm really slow flying. And I notice with this sealed, I have better rudder authority at those real low speeds. So it's, it's fun still learning things. I mean, I've been flying these for a long time and you'd think I'd have it all figured out by now, but I don't. I got some of it figured out, but I, there's, there's always more. We have, I do have a little bit to change on my tying it down in the trailer. My stand kind of tore a hole here on the way down here. So I got a little repair to do there and I got to do a little different style of attaching it on my stand back here in the trailer, but no big deal. This is Oratex, super, the easiest thing there is to repair because it's pre-colored. So no kidding, it's just no big deal. It's like putting a Band-Aid on to patch a hole. But this suspension is really nice on the tail. This is what Just Aircraft came up with for the Super Stole. But you can put it on a Highlander just as easy as a Super Stole. The shock attaches up here, you know, to here on the swing arm. So a lot of airplanes, all the width they have is this much width back here. They, there's suspension tail wheels, but they're very limited suspension and they're very narrow. So the side strength is not much. Well, we're attached back here where it's this, like this wide. So the, the side, the lateral, whatever you call it, strength is it's amazing. I mean, the, the action of this thing is unreal. There's like a foot of travel in that tail wheel. Really nice travel. I actually have this one where I have a nitrogen bottle in here and a couple valves that I can control and let all the pressure out and let the tail down. Or if I have, and the reason I would do that is if I'm in a stall competition and I have a really good headwind, then I would want to just let the tail down and start my ground roll with the full angle attack that I can have. Because I have so much thrust with this motor and my high lift wing, you know, it lifts good. So if I get 15 miles an hour headwind, it just jumps. So that helps if I can let that down, that helps it just jump off the ground. But normally I'd, I'll play with it a little just to get the feel that I'm looking for. Or if I load down the back of the airplane, it's really easy. I just put a little more pressure with my valve and it still rides where I want it to ride. It's kind of a cool deal. It's not going to do a lot for a lot of people. If you didn't have a lot of thrust to go with it, it's not going to help you out too much other than that loading of the airplane. It'd be nice for that. Uh, well, all these things up here, I also like doing stall drag racing. Like I really like doing stall drag racing. That's kind of like my favorite. Well, these are just for creating drag when I'm slipping. Because in stall drag, you accelerate like crazy and then you got to pitch the thing sideways and get it slowed down in the air and then landed and well these create more drag when I'm slipping that's all those are for do those help you out at Arkansas I think so Really? Okay. and I also have a big plastic ones that I put right here on my jury struts same thing only they're a lot bigger but exact same purpose they don't do anything going straight but when you pitch that plane sideways it's more drag and again it's not like wow I can really feel that but you just know it's making more drag and these races sometimes are really close so Again, those little things count. Well, this wing's just like the other one, so not much to say there. My, my suspension, I already told you, just told you about the rear suspension. Part of that, the shock is made by Shock Monster. And uh, it, it, I love the action of it. It's just, I don't know how I could make it any better, the way it's dampened and everything. And the front shocks are kind of the same way. They, I'm really, really happy with with this shock system I get it's 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 soft but yeah it firms up I've never bottomed them you, you don't want to bottom out I have done that before bottoming out and things break when you do that you really don't want to bottom out and this really resists that bottoming out but yet has a real nice feel and gives me a lot of wheel travel too the whole system is shock monster the gear legs the cabane, what that goofy thing is there is just before I normally have a muffler and it mounts right there and I was kind of lazy to take that off. When I'm doing competition I get rid of the muffler and just run the straight pipe. I get a little more power this way. It's loud, super loud, but it seems like people at competitions are like, a lot of them tell me, get rid of the muffler, get it off. We want to hear the noise. Okay, so I'll take it off for that. This, this, this motor is a Yamaha. It, it uh, began 
isn't a snowmobile, but it's a four cylinder, four cycle, double overhead cam, five valve per cylinder. They're really a modern engine. It's a high RPM engine. I mean, when you ride the snowmobile, it'll go right to 11,000 RPM and it'll stay there all day long until you back off. So they're made to turn RPM. Some people are nervous about RPMs. I'm not, I used to race cars where we turned our little the Yamaha engine is to 16,000 RPM and I never blew one up. Well, this one's all been built up by Edge Performance in Norway. And uh, it's, so it's got different val or, uh, rods and pistons and head bolts and head gasket. So it's built up to take the boost because it didn't used to be turbocharged in the sled. And as you can see, now it's turbocharged. So it, instead of 150 horsepower, I'm getting 300 horsepower, which makes an 800 pound airplane really fun to fly. Like really fun to fly. This is my intercooler. So, cause that, you know, a turbocharger, the exhaust comes out, spins this turbine wheel in here, which is attached to a shaft to a little compressor wheel in here. So the exhaust spins it, spins this compressor wheel, it sucks in the air and compresses it. And it comes this way through the intercooler when it compresses, it gets hot. You, well, you don't want hot air for the engine to run on. So it goes through this intercooler and cools it back down, at least somewhat. And then it goes on up into the intake and in through the throttle bodies and into the engine. And that's really the thing that makes this motor make so much power is that, you know, being turbocharged. Um, the gearbox, it's got a, it turns a lot of RPM, but you don't want a prop turning a lot of RPM. So when my engine is turning 10,000 RPM, because of the gearbox here, my prop is turning about 2,600 RPM. So the engine's happy turning the speed it wants, the prop's happy turning the speed it wants, all at the same time. Teal Jenkins, Skytrax, and we're, we are a dealer for these guys. We will sell these gearboxes, but uh, he's a good friend and he does a really good job building them, has good service, been super happy with the gearbox. Without a good gearbox, you could never use this engine in an airplane. That's a, that's a really important part right there. I build some of this stuff. I build the motor mounts. Oh, I kind of modify the oil tanks to make them work. I make a coolant tank. The little coolant tank that comes on the snowmobile doesn't really work on here, so we build those. The ones that don't get turbocharged, where you have an air box, and more normal air box, not force-fed, we build those air boxes. Uh, so we, we make the things, to, the hard stuff we make to make it easy for people that want to use one of these. If, if a guy wants to use something else, that's fine too. I don't really try to push any certain engine, but I am happy with the Yamahas. Uh, I'm really happy with them actually. I can't imagine going to anything else at this point, but I realize they're not for everybody. They don't have dual ignition like a Rotax or a Lycoming. The propeller is, these props, the reason that turns is there's a clutch in the gearbox, a one-way clutch. You wouldn't know it's there unless you do something like that. But it, it helps it to start. Even the, the prop turns when the, you hit the key, but it still lets it start easily. But these props are made in Ukraine. They're not all that expensive and they're ground adjustable, carbon fiber, very nice propellers. On this airplane here, I have uh, Behringer wheels and brakes, and I like them, they're really nice. But I also like Matco's, as long as they're set up correctly. But yeah, these Behringer's are, they're kind of top of the line. They're, they're expensive, they're a couple thousand dollars more than Matco's. They're made in France. They're real nice, they're, they're real nice. The wheels, are, I like the wheels, they're kind of pretty, compared to just a plain aluminum wheel. Oh, here's, here's a little thing I do just because I like to do it. Put one stripe on my tire. Some people put multiple stripes. All that tells you is if it's turning. You can't tell how much it's turning because you can't keep track of, the, track of the stripes. If you put one stripe, like on this tire, it's a 31 inch tire. If you see that thing on, like on the video, you're sitting on the sideline, you see that tape go around one time and I'm off. I just went eight feet. And you can tell by that, you know, it, it's just a reference. I, a lot of times I'll have a camera, like right now there's a camera out here on the wing. So when I go back and look at this and analyze things, I can see that and just, just more for me, for my 
thinking things out and seeing what works and what doesn't.